What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Andrew. It's a pleasure to see you as always. Today's video is a first. A first for the channel, which is pretty special to think about nearly two years of uploading. Today is a first. I just finished a lesson with my coach, Dan, and I had the camera just run. So you can listen to everything that we're saying. You can watch what we're working on. I've taken about 20 minutes of the lesson for this video. So if you want to get an inside scoop into what we do when we work together. This video is for you. Dan's an awesome coach and I've been fortunate enough to work with him for almost two years now and he's a good friend as well. So I really hope you guys enjoy this. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't because it really does make a difference and let me know down below if you want to see more videos like this. Enjoy. But miss fed a little more dry. Um, before, like before Christmas, like before I went up there, yeah, my miss has been dry. But then, earlier this week, I noticed like I just keep keeping the face open. Like, that's what's been happening. So it's a, well, that's how you fix. So like, what I would say is for your is that like I wouldn't say it's bad. I would say it doesn't match the shot you're kind of wanting to hit as your stop shot. It's so, like what I would say is your path is probably like four degrees into out, five degrees into out. So like, if you wanted to hit six seven yard push draws it'd be perfect yeah um so i'm, I'm getting so, quite from the inside now so. so what you're doing then is that at first you start overdrawing it then you just start having the face more open to make it push yeah <laughs> and then it kind of then you have to aim left or kind of blocking it all on like the real answer would be is we need to get so back swing is good that left shoulder and left side's not opening up quite fast enough. Yeah. And so we tilt a little bit more. So I'd like to see the shoulder level there. There's probably five to 10 degrees of tilt mm -hmm. in the club parallel to the ground. And so like swing doesn't look bad from face on. Yeah. But that little bit of extra kind of coming out of that left side bend and tilting a little too early. Like this is good, but when you start kicking that tilt early, yeah, I get under it. Is that, yeah, and it just basically looks like a really good trying to hit a 70 yard draw. Yeah. <laughs> and well, the problem, I'm... and you're going to see, left, don't see much of your left leg and impact, like left side's not opening up. And so, like, it's not flipping, like, it's what most guys that would love to, that are playing kind of push draws and on the draw side of the spectrum would like, but then you start doing funny things to make the ball go out the target because that's not the shot you're trying to hit. So, it's not necessarily that it's like, inherently bad it's just that it doesn't match what, what you're do. trying to yeah. do so that's where you, things get funny you start coming up with ways to kind of make it work which are going to be less consistent than if it just works so watch go out to the top good so this left side opening up left shoulder left leg yeah it's going to pull kind of carry the arms a little more out and in front then everything can fire as hard as it wants. Yeah. But if you start getting this left side working up a little too much too soon, mm -hmm. arms are gonna stay deep, club's gonna get there. Yeah. And then you're already done because body starts decelerating long before you get to impact. You can't add rotation late. No. Because you're already slowing down. And so the path's just gonna go slightly kind of up and out to the right. And I think it started as your way to, it's a, that's the easiest way to like shallow out. Yeah. And so like to, to, like especially when you're hitting a lot of wedges, trying to shallow out and trying to do, like it's very easy to start tilting too much too soon as a way to kind of make that happen. Make the club, but the, causing, yeah, make the club feel like it's exactly. coming out And here. making cause issues with the longer stuff, kind of creating some bad habits. Whereas if the club is laying down enough, your arms can be very out and in front and you can get that left side very open without it being very steep. So it's just, the, it's the thought we had before of like yeah. leveling the left shoulder, but still exactly. opening. And then opening up, yep. And letting, the, letting your pivot kind of pull your arms out and in front. Good. And like, so the practice swings will look slightly and feel kind of a little bit over it. Yeah. I guess what kind of throws me off is because when I'm practicing at, at the club, my divots still go left. Yes. 
of the divots after you make contact. Yeah. So you can have a divot that is left even though the path is out to the right. Mm -hmm. And that's why like they can be some divots can be somewhat indicative. Especially if you kind of understand your pattern and it's the same thing every single time. But it's not indicative of what the actual path is at contact. Because if you're doing it right with the amount of shafting you have, that divot's going to be, low point's going to be four to six inches in front of the yeah. golf ball. So for you, like what that divot's pointing at low point is not going to be where the club's moving when it makes contact with the golf ball. Yeah, I guess because like in the last, you know, month and a half to two months, not really having much to play in, just play a tournament a month, it's been, I've been like, my alignment got screwy, so that, because I started aiming way right and basically yep. hitting holes back to the target, so maybe that's why, like I yeah, was, I was overcorrected to, yeah. to try and get it, yeah. like that's normal. So as you come in now, when the clubs are on the ground, the shoulders are level. Yeah. So I kind of want the, what you're going to notice is the tendency is the shoulders and the club tend to match each other. Mm -hmm. So what happens is if yeah. you start tilting too soon, the club's going to get dumped under and kind of get below your hands at that point. Whereas as the left side stays down and works around a little bit more, club head stays a little bit higher and the face closes just a little bit slower. So it keeps the face more open to the path and gets the path more left, which obviously if we're trying to cut it, that's kind of yeah. what we want. But what it's going to do is the goal is like rather than you, like the miss before was going to be where you were just holding the face open is like a push cut because you're trying to make basically a draw swing cut. So your pass is four like to five degrees we first in to out. Ago. Yeah. And then you have a face that's open to that. Like it's gonna start right, go right, is as this left side kind of opens up, mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to start cuts that start all line or even a touch left of where you're aimed and then fall back to the right. And it's definitely gonna help flighting it down a little yeah. bit more. Um, kind of covering it. Well, one of the things I've been doing in the last three weeks is in the gym just working more on my lower body because that's the thing I would find like trying to open up if I wasn't strong enough here or my hips were tight. Yeah. It's just easy to do that. When it's cold it's easy yeah. to not rotate like it's the that's why it's a good player problem and why so many good players come out of that left tilt too early and start tilting back because it's the easy band-aid way to shallow out without having to do a lot of other things. Yeah. And the problem is it just gets too big and it becomes like big draws, but it's why left is such a big problem as a general for most good players. When I played, played Jack's Beach and played nine ball the morning after Christmas and I was hitting draw. Like, what's going on? I played Windsor Park two days before Christmas by nine in the morning and it's draws. It's cold. I'm like, why am I getting draws? Yeah. Like So like if you're not moving as well, it's just the easy Yeah. And so to me, a lot of it is the understanding then in that situation, kind of what you need to feel and the direction you need to head to kind of get those way more online. Like I said, is the biggest key is going to be you won't hit it left. But the reason why you're going to overcut these in the beginning is that you don't want to hit it left. Yeah. So like as the path moves more left, you can start the ball more left without it overdrawing. And but like in your head, you're more afraid of left than right. So at first, these are going to overcut because your brain's basically going, "Don't hit it left," and you won't. But then you yeah. hit it overdone to the right and the moment you stop fear you hit enough overtouch your brain's going to go i know this isn't going left anymore so then it doesn't matter like you're 
if the miss is an overcut and you can trust that it's not going to go left, then you can just start lines and come more and more left without fear. So like you'll stop missing right when you you stop fearing left. Yeah. Like the the fear of hitting too big of a draw is going to cause you to hit too big of a cut initially. But they're not going to be push cuts, so they should still kind of start on line. They're just going to curve more than you'd like. And is this, remember when we were working like a year ago on where the club was yep. leaving, like would that drill still be complete yes. right now? Yep. And that's going to help that, see arms are more out in front, clubs coming down kind of right on the forearm. Yeah right on your hands like I would say that path is probably close to zero to maybe one degree left like it's not extremely left that's right really but it's going to feel left and you're gonna see that club exits kind of right through your rib cage yeah. where instead of it was getting a little more up yeah. left shoulder kind of like, which like I said is that that's really good if you're trying to hit kind of high shallow draws not very good if you're trying to hit but like that like cuts. halfway drill. Exactly. And you're gonna see what, that actually started left and cut, like those really help you start it left and cut it. And over time, you're gonna trust that you can yeah. start it more and more left and that ball's not gonna go left. Yeah. Cause that, and it was mainly just with irons. Driver and woods was fine, but it was, yeah. Yeah, it was surprising when I would hit these draws with irons, just in like fun rounds. But like, that's not actually out. Like, that's yeah, gonna yeah. feel very out. That's maybe like three degrees left. But that's way more stable through the ball, face yeah. closing yeah. way slower. Like, that's exactly kind of what we want. Yeah. And that's done with a. Relatively simple, like it's not a place you've never been. It's just getting it back there without, like, keeping the better backswing, keeping some of the good stuff, while also getting left side working how it did probably six months ago. Because I think like that's kind of what I'm honing in on right now is just refocusing myself on like that deliberate practice where I'm doing these unenjoyable drills almost that are hard to do, but need to do them a lot. Well, and the way things are generally gonna go is you're gonna have a couple things that you're constantly going to have to work on. Yeah. Well, that's why like doing the really slow swings is just every day helps. One, like it's kind of like tightening a bolt. Yeah. Is you have to hold both ends. Like you can't screw just one side, it just spins in place. So we actually want to tighten it up. You're going to have to work both ends. So like there's going to be times where you're working on the back swing and then the transition gets and through the ball might get a little sloppy because your focus was elsewhere. So then you have to go back and kind of also tighten up that other side. And it's going to be a lot of kind of like, okay, this week I'm focusing on this a little bit. It's going to be prioritizing what is the most important thing kind of at a given time. You'll see the little ones are way more confident in starting left and cutting it than as you start picking up speed. Yeah. Your trust level diminishes. Yeah, isn't nearly as high. So watch, let's go back to doing after that one. I want to see one like, in between too. that. So like the ones that were really good pull cuts probably were going 130 yards, 120 yards. Like the, the short ones? Yeah, like yeah. those are, 100. and so, and what's, what color is that? Eight iron. So like 165, 160. Yeah. yeah. So like let's go in between those two and try to hit one 145, but with the shape. Yeah, like it's, I mean like a ladder, like, so you're really good at the like 70%. Yeah. And then it's bridging that to the full swing. It's so, funny, cause that I, felt like it was gonna go left. Even exactly. with the face, like it felt like, oh, that was a draw. <laughs> and that's where like you have to, like when you go full speed, if you feel that you're gonna bail on it and that's where you're yeah. gonna hit the push cut because, but in reality it doesn't go left. You just have to build the confidence that you know
but that's not going left at all. Because I remember watching something with like back when Justin and Sean were like on a lot of TV, yeah. and like his they worked on three quarter shots like all the time. Yeah. Like I said, your ability to trust that length shot is higher. And trust comes with reps. Like, it's not yeah. going to happen automatically. So, like, you can do it relatively quickly, but trusting it takes time. So, to me, I'd start with the 120 yard ones and then kind of ladder it up until you get to full speed. And if you hit two or three offline in a row, I throttle it back down yeah. to slow. And your, your goal is to kind of work your way all the way up to full speed and kind of stay there and not bounce back to having to go slow. But it might take a week before you can take extended periods of time in full swings, full speed, and stay there for an extended period of time without having to kind of throttle back to half speed, kind of 120 yard shots. Well, I find it really makes me pay attention to sequencing too. Yeah. Like it has to be this as opposed to yeah. what sometimes yeah. happens. Like I said, is your, what it really comes down to is at slower speeds your awareness is higher and that awareness builds trust in what you're doing. Cool one. Yeah. It's a lot easier. Yeah. And what's going to happen is then after you hit three or four full ones, though, you see the, the fourth, fifth, sixth full one is going to start to slip a little bit. Yeah. And then you're going to have to go back. So in the beginning, you might be able to make five full swing shots before you start kind of not having it really dialed in. And then the beauty of it is going to be that then every day that's going to go from five swings to eight swings to... 20 so eventually you could maybe make 30, 40 minutes where you could stay full speed without hitting a bounce. But it kind of doesn't make sense to keep hitting bad. Like yeah. if two out of five are misses, like we'd rather slow down to where the quality goes up to where, but you still want to push that limit to where you try to find what is close to, like the fastest you can go while getting five out of five. You don't want to stay at the 120 yard ones forever if you could do 140 just as well. Yeah. So it's like the combination and finding the balance between pushing the limits while actually still having really high quality and more importantly you can actually feel what's going on. And that's where the camera, the live view, or your phone helps. Is because yeah. Not only are you feeling what's going on by going slower in your awareness, you're tying that into kind of a visual with what you're seeing. And if you, what you're seeing is what you're feeling and it's producing good shots, that's when you can rock up and be the most confident kind of coming into any event. That's a good one. Yeah, because even right away I feel it. it's more toe-centered yep. than it is heel-centered. Yep. And when you're trying to hit slight cuts, the slight miss off the toe is never kind of a bad thing. No. 